Okay, so here we are. This is Eating Your Feed. My name is Nikki. Today, my friend Adam is challenging me to make macarons shaped as corgis. It's this shop called Honey and Butter in Irvine, California that makes a bunch of different types of macarons. One of them is this thing called a unicorgi. A unicorgi is a corgi with a unicorn horn. It looks really easy based off of the video because it shows her just like piping the shape of a corgi and then they fill it with like what looks like a chocolatey filling and they kind of just pop it right on top. Everyone loves a macaron. Never made macarons and I've never made any type of food in the shape of an animal before. As always today, very talented to tasty chef, producer, Rie is here. How hard is it really? In my opinion, it's one of the most difficult desserts to make. So you just need a practice. The feet of a macaron is when the cookie rises. Mm -hmm. And so that's like an important mark of a macaron. Yep. So if you don't have feet, that's a bad macaron. Great, if I struggle, okay, cool. okay. I found a tasty recipe. I'm gonna just make regular circular macarons first. And then if that goes well, I will graduate to the unicorgi. Look out world. What if I'm so good at this? So I printed out a template. I've seen other people use it when they like pipe it out so that it's relatively the same size and shape. So that's underneath a piece of like baking paper, 200 grams of powdered sugar, 110 grams of almond flour. Now I need 100 grams of egg whites. Shabam. Stripe city. Population me. 50 grams of sugar for my meringue. Big bowl. An important thing is that the almond flour and the powdered sugar are as fine as possible. So the way people do that is to throw it in the food processor. What am I doing that? There we go. Oh yeah, this is gonna be fine. So I'm gonna make my meringue, which is like the base for this cookie. A little splooch of tartar. And I'm just gonna whip them. That will give us like the firmness and structure for this light and fluffy cookie. What a weird thing. These things come out of chickens. Oh, that looks pretty stiff. Oh, what's that thing? <laughs> I'm really scared to do that. <laughs> if you can like lift it over your head and it doesn't come out, that means it's ready. <laughs> I could really f myself over this morning. Woo! And I guess it's just all of it? It all goes in. We're not doing any food coloring. These are just gonna be plain macarons. And now we fold. Don't overmix, don't undermix. We wanna get it to like a ribbony consistency so that it is fluidy. It like holds its shape. Wow, these were very stiff peaks. I'm gonna go a little bit more. Yeah, that's a kind of innate. I'm gonna stop mixing, I think we got it. So I'm gonna be baking with a convection oven which like blows hot air throughout. And so you don't want any paper flapping back and forth. So I'm just using a little bit of the batter that kind of like spilled over and I'm putting it on the corner of my baking paper so that it stays down. I don't have much experience piping, but when I was like a kid and watching people bake, it was always like the most appealing part of it. Ah, it's coming out! Was I not supposed to cut the bag until the stuff was in? Oh, Ugh. These are look relatively close to each other. Okay. <laughs> There's like a tapping thing that I have to do to kind of get rid of all of these little air bubbles that you can see. So now I have to let it rest for like 30 minutes. I don't know why. So what we wanna check is that there's like a smooth film that has created on the top layer. So when I touch it, it shouldn't like indent. Oh yeah, pretty solid. 285 for about 15 minutes. Oh man, it's flapping. Okay, so it's been 15 minutes. I'm gonna take them out now. So they do have feet, but it's little. Okay, so these have cooled. Ooh, they're sticking a little. Yeah, they're a little underdone. Good, huh? Yeah. So I'm gonna try regular macarons again because the consistency of these, there's no way I would have been able to pipe a corgi. Batch number two. I think the recipe was spot on. I don't think I need to change a whole lot there. It was just really the mixing and the bake time. Oh, it does go this way. How did I do? <laughs> What's happening? We're stiff, ready to sift in the flour and sugar. So I've got red and yellow food coloring to make hopefully an orangey corgi color. Right, that looks so different. What the? I am being tested. This is weird. Are we sure this is food coloring? Looks like icing, right? Yeah, this is just icing. <laughs> <laughs> I found orange. Wow, a little bit of that stuff goes a long way. It's a little thick still, but here's where I gotta be real careful. I'm gonna stop. All right. Ooh, I'm making a mess. This already looks better. Okay, definitely more pipeable. Those are gonna sit for 30 minutes. I have batter left over. Should I try making shapes? I'm an expert. So the corgi kind of had a biggish head. So he's kind of got a funky ear. All corgis are different. Oh, what a disaster. I also think my orange is a little too pale. We are making improvements. Okay, let's go. 
All right. So we have feet, We've got nice round edges. I think I definitely got more of a rise out of these. I think I still over mixed, which is crazy. I definitely need more orange. These corgis are pretty pale. This is like human flesh color. <laughs> I think I'm gonna make a filling. I think what I'm gonna do is a ganache. And I learned how to make a ganache when I make the crepe cake. Bloop, 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 bloop. Oh. I'm gonna do a one-to-one -one ratio of a chocolate to a cream. Cool. Ooh, hot cream over chocolate. And then that's going to sit for about 30 seconds and then I'm gonna mix it. I think it's gonna thicken as it cools. Get it to room temperature and then I'll... All right. Oh no! The whole bottom came out. That does not look half bad. Not delicate at all. I don't know if it's like I haven't let them cool enough. Yeah. I don't know what it is. It's on the bake. After you bake, peel one, mm -hmm. and if it stick in the paper, that is on the bake. But these feet are better, right? Mm-hmm. My ganache is too wet. Did you put it in your refrigerator? No. Maybe that's why. <laughs> Day two, macaron. So Rie said my last batch were underbaked, so I gotta do a better job getting them baked properly. I also realized that these are like gluten-free, dairy-free cookies. 200 grams per 110 grams per Super fine. We are not going to overmix this. Should I try counting? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we want to do a little more than I did last time. 11, 12, three, four, five. 35 feels good. My instinct is to go a little bit more, but I think that's what I did last time. This is it. This is definitely more orange than last time. I'm gonna continue to make the little circle cookies here just to make sure I can get a good bake on them. And then whatever leftover batter I have, I'll practice some piping corgis. All right, so the batter is gonna set and then we'll be ready to bake. And I think the corgis are gonna have to bake longer than the little ones. Pretty stable there. Let's go, oven time. Rie recommended taking them out and seeing if it'll peel off relatively easy. That means it's completely baked. So I'm gonna go test one, see where we're at. I think it's okay. I'm gonna let them sit and dry. I turned the oven off. I've left the macarons in there with the door open a little bit so that it will dry out. The ganache yesterday wasn't quite the right consistency, so I'm gonna go for more of a buttercream. Chocolate buttercream is essentially butter, half a tablespoon of vanilla. Yum. Maybe my butter should have been a little soft. That's creamy. More powdered sugar. Quarter cup of cocoa powder. So I put in one tablespoon of milk and just a little more, so I'm just slowly incorporating all of the ingredients. It tastes good and it looks like a good buttercream and it's gonna be like a sweet heart attack. So it's been 30-ish minutes. <laughs> baby, yeah! Yeah, let's see how these boys look. Oh yeah, look at that. I gotta go get that buttercream because I'm gonna put these on them. Yeah, this looks like poopy. Little corgi poop. It works. <laughs> I made a sandwich cookie. Should I give this little doggy poopy eyes? <laughs> Just like the video. These aren't perfectly shaped, but I have a top and I have a bottom. Mmm. Now the unicorgi. I'm gonna make two batters. One, just orange. Let's make some ears. I have to make another batch now. I need a white, black, and red. I'm gonna try and mix it and then split it up. Oh shit. Well, this is gonna be very black. <laughs> That's okay. Oh yeah, it's a good red. Three colors. Okay, I got my corgi face up, white on the ears, and a unicorn horn. A line down the middle, nice big old eyeballs, an oval for the mouth. Not looking too bad. Oh, it looks so cute. <laughs> All right, I got a lot of work to do. We need their white eye dots. <laughs> My first one was definitely the best. Really just kind of went downhill from here. Okay, it's been roughly 30 minutes. These corgis have set and they are ready to bake. Look at this ear, it lifted. We're good. All right, putting them back in to dry. I realized that one tray is completely missing the one white eye dot. So I really only have one tray of viable macaron corgis. I think we've got at least one good one in there. I think they're done and I'm gonna go get them. Unicorgi! Man, I really hope they peel off. Oh yeah! I'm really worried that bow tie's just completely gonna break off. And the horn. Please don't break, please don't break, please don't break. Ah! I'm squishing it! Hey! Unicorgi! Check it out! <laughs> I'm really surprised, actually. All right, buttercream. Oh, oh no. I shouldn't have put it in the fridge. Can I warm it up? Stand by. 
My buttercream was too cold. I microwaved it 30 seconds and it's nice and soft. These look like bellies. That wasn't great. <laughs> There's obviously not enough frosting on that side. It looks like doggy poo. I think I did so good. <laughs> One ear's way bigger than the other. The bow tie is a little bit blobby, but he's got a good unicorn horn and he's got a cute face. Let's tell Rie. Oh, did you go to the store and vote it? No, I didn't. <laughs> I made these. You didn't think I could do it. Uh, to be honest. <laughs> you can be honest now. <laughs> I'm so surprised. <laughs> can I eat it? Yeah, let's eat one. Nose to nose. Nice, like inside it's kind of chewy. Mm -hmm. Outside it's crispy. It's just so sweet. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Right? I did so good, no one thought I could do it. <laughs> That's my favorite feeling. All right, so I figured out how to make a good macaron, and I figured out how to pipe them in the shape of corgis and get a good bake on them. Made a chocolate buttercream filling. I think this is the closest I've ever gotten to like nailing a video. It took me two days to be able to make three that look kind of okay. But the restaurant has like tons of these to sell, which is really, really cool. I think you nailed that. Mm. Wow. I'm gonna put this on my resume. <laughs> I can make unicorgi macarons. Oh, yes.